I am Anil Kumar and in this video I am going to discuss with you one of the most important question. It is on advanced functions grade 12. I have picked up this question from a book written by Nelson page 243 unit 4. Chapter is polynomial equations and inequalities and question is famous by the name flight of osprey. Now I have given a part of this question here in following couple of videos probably four videos I am going to answer all these questions one by one the question is the following table shows the birds height above the water as given by an observer so observer has given time and height 0 2 4 6 7 8 on the time scale and respective heights are 7, 10, 5, 0, 0, and 3. What we need to do from this data is first, plot the graph. Second, determine polynomial equation to model the data. Third, how long was the osprey underwater? There are more questions in between, so I've taken up just few important ones which I thought you may need help with. When was the osprey above 6 meter height? Now we can do this from the equation which we develop in part 2. And then estimate the rate at which the osprey's height is changing at the time it hits the water. We are going to do it both algebraically and graphically. So these are different parts to the same question. You can try them out and then look for my solution in the following videos. I hope it helps. Thank you and all the best. I am Anil Kumar sharing with you solution of a question from the book Nelson Grade 12 Advanced Functions. It is page 243, Chapter 4. Now this question is a very important question. It has been there in the test and normally discussed in assignments. But students really find it very difficult to answer. And that's the whole idea. Why I have a part of it here to discuss. Now there are many sections to this question but the main part is to find the polynomial equation which can represent the data. And that is the part which I'll do in this particular video. A part of the question is, the following table shows the bird's height above the water as given by an observer. Determine an equation to model the data. At different times, we have height of the bird. 0, 7, 2, 10, 4, 5, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, 3. Now, amongst uh, so many different parts of this question, which are all very critical, one of them is to sketch a graph from the data. So let me do a rough sketch here which will help us to find the equation and solve rest of the questions. Now my sketch is not going to be to the scale. Reason is very simple. I'm only giving you a kind of solution making you understand what the things are. Accuracy is all dependent on you. Take a graph paper and plot accurate graph. Now here, on horizontal scale, we have time in seconds. And on the vertical scale, we have height in meters, right? So we'll say h of t, and it is in meters. At 0, it is 7, so let's begin from some value. So bird takes up a flight, so it goes up, and then plunges down, and then comes up. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a part of the graph here and I say it goes like this and then like this. So that is the kind of graph which represents the data. And of course, I'm not taking any scale. Important point for me is these two critical values. Zeros at 6 and 7. So 6 seconds and 7 seconds, we have zeros. Now these zeros will help us to find the equation of the polynomial. Another critical point is the y-intercept and we can consider one more point so I'll prefer to use 4 and 5 which is let us say here 
okay so we'll use these three points this point for us is 4 and 5 and we have two zeros now taking these three points what we are assuming here is a polynomial degree 3 that is cubic function to start with right so we are modeling this situation with a cubic function so we say height h of t is a times we know two factors we don't know one there could be one more right it seems there is one so let us think like this do you see that do you see that this point right so that makes it cubic correct we don't know that so we'll say x minus b times x minus we know these two that's fortunate 6 and x minus 7 otherwise this would have been held right even now it's a difficult question now we can say let this be the polynomial representing the data given to us correct now to find the two variables a and b we'll use the y-intercept which at x equals to 0 we have 7 and this point 4 and 5 correct let me highlight the points which we are going to use this one and this one let me call these points as a and b okay so this is my point a and this is my point b i've already used these two intercepts correct substituting a that is x value zero so we have height at t equals to zero so if i write zero here i get a times minus b zero minus b is minus b and that gives me 0 minus 6, 0 minus 7. And all this is equal to 7. Got it? That's how I get my equation. And 3 negatives will give me a negative. So I get negative A of B is equals to 7 divided by, I am dividing by 6 times 7. Is it okay? And that is 1 over 6. So I'm calling this to be my, let that be the original equation. Let me say 1, 2. Okay, so I know product of A and B, negative product of AB, let it be. I could have made negative here anyway, is 1 over 6. Now I'll substitute the second point, 4 and 5. So height at t equals to 4 is 5. So let me substitute 4 here. A times 4 minus B times 4 minus 6 times 4 minus 7 okay let me write this time here so at 4 the height is 5 so I have 5 equals to a times 4 minus b 4 minus 6 is minus 2 4 minus 7 is minus 3 so what I get here is I get a times 4 minus b as equals 2 3 times 2 is 6, 5 divided by 6, correct? Okay. I get 5 divided by 6, okay. So that means I get two equations, right? So let me call this as equation number 3. I have very limited space. I want to finish it at this line, and that's the reason why I haven't taken other parts in this particular video. Well, I can make another videos for you to answer the rest of the equations. But in any case, now we have two different equations which can help us solve. So let me write both equations together. Which one I should write minus AB as one sixth. Okay, so there are so many ways to now solve it. So we have minus AB equals to one over six. So we got these two equations here, right? With the help of these two equations, we can solve and find both A and B, right? So equation number two and equation number three. If I divide one by the other, right? So if I divide one by the other, what do I get? Do you see that? So if I divide one by the other, I get five over six, or what I can do is I can substitute one over six as minus AB. So it's five times one over six. I'll do that. So, so let me go from these two equations on this side okay I hope that will work 
sorry for all this mess but I think it will really help you so I'm using 1 over 6 as minus AB so I'm writing 5 times minus AB okay no harm equals to A times 4 minus B so A and A cancels right we'll solve for B now so we have minus 5B equals to 4 minus B you could divide one equation by the other get rid of A that is another way but I kind of saw it so no problems so we can bring B to this side so what do we get? So if I bring b to so minus 5b plus b equals to 4 or minus 4b equals to 4 that gives us b equals to 4 divided by minus 4 equals to minus 1. Good job. So b is minus 1. Okay. Further. Now we know b is minus 1. Let me use another color. Let me use black itself. b equals to minus 1. And we already know minus AB is 1 over 6, so I'll use this equation. So I say, I'll put B as minus 1 here. So I have 1 over 6 equals to minus A times minus 1. And that gives me A value as 1 over 6. Do you get that? So A is 1 over 6 for me. So I got both the values. Since A is 1 over 6, I can write down my solution. So my solution is, let me write down right here now. Okay. So final answer, the polynomial is H of T equals to A is 1 over 6, 1 over 6, times X minus, B is minus 1, so X plus 1, times X minus 6, times x minus 7. So that is the polynomial equation we are looking for. Now once you know this equation, let me just push this page slightly more forward so it's absolutely clear, right? We can do rest of the parts. Now let me read those parts for you. So according to your model, how long was the osprey underwater? Well, it is 6 to 7 but we can find from here also. And according to your model, when was the osprey more than 6 meters above the water? So greater than 6, we can solve with this. And likewise, there are so many other questions. But all can be solved using this equation now. So the critical part here is to use three points from the given data and get the polynomial equation. So let's get back to what we did. So we had the data which clearly gave us two x-intercepts. These helped to form equation in the factored form. We assumed one as b and solved for two variables using two more points. y-intercept is always a good point and a point close by. You could select any and then get your equation. So like we did, you can actually solve such questions. I hope this really helps you. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot about similar topics. Thank you and all the best. I'm Anil Kumar and in this video, we'll answer other two questions based on flight of osprey. In the previous video, we solved from the data, we found the equation of the flight of osprey. Now, let me remind you of what the question is. The question is, the following table shows the bird's height above the water as given by an observer. Determine an equation to model the data. So the data given to us was time 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, and 8, and height was 7, 10, 5, 0, 0, 3. In the previous video, we found the equation from the data. The points which we used were these two x-intercepts giving rise to these two factors. The third factor we found with the help of using another point and we utilized 4, 5. To find the value of A, we also utilized 0, 7, the y-intercept. So from these four points, we got a polynomial of degree 3, the cubic equation, and h of t is calculated as 1 over 6 of 6 plus 1 times 6 x plus 1 times x minus 6 times x minus 7. 
Now we'll utilize this model in answering other questions. So according to your model, that means this model, how long was the osprey underwater? So that is absolutely clear. It went underwater at time t equals to 6 and came out at 7. And so it is 1 second from 6 to 7 seconds, right? So that is the value and this is the time. Second part of this question which we are going to answer in this video is when was the osprey more than 6 meter above the water? Now to do this question what we should we can adopt a couple of methods. Let me first sketch the graph. Approximately the graph for us was kind of like this, right? And here these points are 6 and 7 for us. The y-intercept is 7, right? So that is the kind of graph which we are working with. This is height and this is time in seconds. Now the question is, when was the osprey more than 6 meters above water? So that means, let us say if this is 7 meters, then of course 6 will be, let's say somewhere here, right? So let's say this is 6 meters for us. We need to find that point how to find this point that is the question so we know the equation height is given by 1 over 6 times x plus 1 times x minus 6 times x minus 7 and we need this height to be greater than 6 more than 6 meters so we can rearrange this so we get x plus 1 times x minus 6 times x plus 7 should be greater than 36. That is what we need, right? So the height, which is represented by this, we just modify and we say this polynomial, let's call this the polynomial p of x. So we say this polynomial p of x should be greater than 36. That is what we are working on now. So what we can do here at this moment is, we can use calculator, plug in some values. We just need this point, right? So it is definitely less than 6, right? So we can just pick up the calculator, plug in values, and calculate from the given equation what is closest to, what value of x gives us closest to 36, right? So let's find what is p of 4. For example right so 4 will be in between so we'll write 4 it is 4 plus 1 times 4 minus 6 times 4 minus 7 right so what I will do is I will just plug in the values calculate on the calculator so within brackets we'll write 4 plus 1 bracket close then again within brackets 4 minus 6 bracket close times 4 minus 7 bracket close equal to we get 30. So P4 is 30 for us. Now let's find P5. So P5 will be within brackets 5 plus 1 bracket close 5 minus 6 times 5 minus 7 which gives us 12. So we find P5 is 12. So, so the answer is actually so it is decreasing, correct? There was no point finding P5. We should go backwards, right? We should find what is before this. We are looking for 36. So we should find what is P of 3.5, right? Slightly before 4. So let's do that now. So within brackets, 3.5 plus 1 times 3.5 minus 6 times 3.5 minus 7. And that gives us, let's convert to decimals, 39.37. So 3.5, let us say we have a 0.4, which is 30. We need just 36. So we are very close, right? So that means we have to move slightly more than 3.5. So let's go 3.6 this time and calculate. So let's calculate again. 3.6 plus 1. Then within brackets, 3.6 minus 6, within brackets, 3.6 minus 7. When we multiply all these factors, 
what do we get? We get 37.53. 37.53 is more than 36, right? So which is which is very good value. We can again try 0.3.7, okay? So 3.7 gives us within brackets 3.7 plus 1. So we are not using graphing calculator so we have to do like this, correct? 3.7 minus 6, 3.7 minus 7 within brackets that gives us a value which is 35 points 35.67 so that is lower than 36 correct so from here we can conclude that that is a critical point so this point is approximately I mean in the figure we've just squeezed in the x value is approximately 37 point we can write 5 right so we know 3 that is more than 36 correct so Oh, sorry, this is the y value, I'm sorry, 3.6. So from here, what we see is that the osprey is more than 6 meters above the water from t equals to 0 to t equals to 3.6 seconds, right? So that is the answer. So we do it by, uh, by the method of induction, just plug in the values and check. Correct? That should give you a very accurate answer. I hope that helps. So in the next video, we will see the slope from the tangent and also algebraically. Thank you and all the best. I'm Anil Kumar. We are solving this question on flight of osprey, polynomial equations and inequalities. The question was, the following table shows the bird's height above the water as given by the observer. Determine an equation to model the data. This we did in the first part. Time given to us was 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Respective heights were 7, 10, 5, 0, 0, and 3. We calculated in the earlier videos that height, this height can be modeled as h of t equals to 1 over 6 times x plus 1 times x minus 6 times x minus 7. Now, there were a couple of questions to answer. Now, we are almost at the end. It says, use your model to estimate the rate at which the osprey's height is changing at the time it hits the water. Now, from the data, we know it hits the water at this time. So, it just hits and then comes out of the water like this. So, it is at t equals to 6. So, the time is t equals to 6. So at the time when it just hits the water, so we can take preceding rate of change at this moment. That is to say that the rate of change will be h of 6 minus h of 5.99 divided by 6 minus 5.99, correct? So that should give us the rate of change at the time when it hits the water, rate of change of height, correct? So that is what we need to calculate. So what we'll do is, we know h of 6 is 0, right? Because if I put 6 here, this factor is 0. So it is 0 minus. I need to calculate the value when x is 5.99. So let's calculate. It is 1 over 6 times 5.99 plus 1 times 5.99 minus 6 times 5.99 minus 7. Everything divided by now 6 minus 5.99 that means 0 0.01. Correct? So, so that is what we need to calculate. So we can use the calculator. Of course the answer is negative, right? So we can write down negative and calculate the value. So it is one sixth of all this. So let me do within brackets 5.99 plus 1 bracket close 5.99 minus 6 bracket close times 5.99 minus 7 bracket close equals to divided by 6 so that gives you one value divided by 
0 0.01 gives us the answer which is minus 1.1766 right so approximately this is the average rate of change the height is in meters and time is in seconds so when you use your model you get that as your answer so that is how we can find the rate of change of height at the time when it hits the water the osprey hits the water correct so that's our solution in the next video we will see it how to find this average rate of change by drawing a tangent on the curve we'll summarize all the things which you have learned in the next video i hope this exercise really helps you to understand and appreciate the concept i am anil kumar you can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot thank you and all the best I'm Anil Kumar and I hope you enjoyed the journey with me of solving this very interesting problem on flight of osprey. This question was taken from page 243 Nelson Advanced Functions, Unit 4. That's a very important question as you all know. Normally it comes in assignment or sometimes a test problem. The problem given to us was the following table shows bird's height above the water as given by an observer times 024678 height was 710503 we had to plot the graph determine polynomial equation to model the data how long was the osprey underwater when was the osprey above 6 meter height estimate the rate at which osprey's height is changing at the time it hits the water so what we did initially was that we didn't really plot the graph, but we found the equation first, right? So we did part two of this, that is determine the polynomial equation to model the data. And here is the, the portion which you can see and relate to. So this is how we did it. We took care we took these two x-intercepts, x minus 6 and x minus 7, and we just assume the third intercept to be at b. So x minus b will be a factor times a. These two unknowns, a and b, were calculated using the other two points, 0, 7, the y-intercept, and b as 4 and 5. So those are the calculations, and we got the equation h of t equals to 1 over 6, times x plus 1 times x plus 6 times x minus 7 so basically this is minus 1 okay so that is how we found the equation to begin with right and then we explored further and we did how long was the osprey underwater this was fairly clear the osprey was underwater between time 6 and 7 and then we found when was the osprey above 6 meter height so we in the next video which you can see in details we answered these two questions 6 to 7 is when the osprey is underwater and more than 6 meters we substituted many values and figured out that it is from t equals to 0 to 3.6 seconds approximately 3.6 seconds gave us a value of 37.53 which is more than 36 3.7 gave a value of 35.67 and then we did so we did this part and the next in the video which I just showed you and then we had to estimate rate at which the osprey's height is changing now that part here is the solution in the next video had that part that is we found we applied our formula the model h of t equals to 1 over 6 times x plus 1 times x minus 6 times x minus 7. It hits water at t equals to 6. So we did rate of change preceding rate of change. h of 6 minus h of 5.99 divided by 6 minus 5.99 calculated the value which was negative minus 1.1766. It is expected and you can see the tangent is going downwards that is negative right since the osprey is diving in right and now we are almost at the end and we will now show you the graph the last part is the same question but graphically right so we'll try to find rate of change graphically and this is the current 
topic of the video. So here is the graph for you. So we have the same question, the same data, right? 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. So at 0, we have a 0 0.7, correct? At 2, we have a 0 0.10. You can see that. At 4, we have 5. This is 5 for us. At 6, the point is 0. And at 7, again, it is 0. You can connect all these points and get your graph. The model for us is h of t equals to 1 over 6, x plus 1, x minus 6, x minus 7. We found the value of a and this intercept using these two points, correct? So I've just extended the graph to show you that this is at minus 1. So that's a perfect cubic polynomial before you, right? Now in this graph, we are going to find rate of change when the osprey just dives in or hits the water level. So I've drawn a tangent line. You can see very clearly the tangent which passes through just touching at t equals to 6 and we can find rate of change from rise over run, correct? So if you see here, that is the rise which is basically a fall by 7, right? So we can say, let me use another ink. So we say rate of change at t equals to 6 is, so from this graph, 7 minus 7, is it okay? And the x value changes 6, right? So what we did here is delta y over delta x, that is rate of change, right? So we can calculate this using the calculator. The answer is, we'll do 7 divided by 6, which is equals to 1.166. So it is negative 1.166, right? So which is approximately 1.17. And that is what we got when we did algebraically also, right? So I think with this, we have shown you the complete solution of this interesting question, which was picked from the book Nelson, page 243, unit 4. You can go through all these videos. There are, I think, four in all. In the first, we discussed the question. Then, one by one, we solved each part. And at the end, we have compiled them all in this video. I hope that helps. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you. And do share your comments and remarks. All the best for your test.